um, that's where we're going to start today. Open your Bibles into 1 John chapter 1. And if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, I put it up on the screen. Um, we're going to start looking at verse 5, and we're going to go through um, 2, 2. I think that's a Larry typo there. But it's a small one. All right, so 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 5 which reads, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing to you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So now as I was reading and journaling through this, if you will, um, the Lord was really pulling me to a topic and to a word that's repeated twice in here. And that's this word here called aletheia. Um, that is the truth. And so when John mentions the truth and he mentions it twice, I started asking myself, okay, what is he referring to as the truth? He's not saying your truth, as some would say. In today's society, he's calling it the truth. So what does that mean to him? And so what are the benefits of believing the truth or the consequences of denying the truth? And so that's what we're going to go through today. What we're going to step through is defining what the truth is. And so we have that word aletheia. There it is in the Greek um, from, I pulled up two Greek dictionaries here, BDAG, which is a very common one defines it as hiding nothing, truthfulness, dependable uprightness. Then I have a second one just to kind of cross compare, and that's the Lexingham um, Dictionary, calls it as truth, true, sincerity, or integrity. And so that's kind of what the word itself means. It's truth, it's hiding nothing, it's dependable, okay? So I found an interesting item whilst garage sailing this summer. Um, Emily and I, we, we do that. We go garage sailing. And that was this, mm, a physical copy of the dictionary. Very cool. Yeah. It's, this is an amazing resource to have because it's physical. No one can change it. It can't be edited. You know, when it was listed at the garage sale for 25 cents and upon trying to buy it, they gave it to me for free. And so I, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll take it. I asked them why they were getting rid of it. And they said, well, it takes up space on the bookshelf. And I got this phone here and I can go to dictionary.com and I got a free dictionary. Okay. That's, you know, reasonable. That's fine and well. Um, but it's, it's not very dependable. These online dictionaries, they, they, they can be a little wonky, right? They can be edited at the whim of a person or whoever, right? I, I work in IT. I know how websites work. It takes me two seconds to edit 100 websites because that's how cool things are. Um, and so while terminology and speech can change over time, there are some words that are timeless, right? Timeless words. And when John is referring to the truth, that's what he's referring to is a timeless word. He's speaking of the fact that truth is truth no matter what day or age you live in. Um, John understood this, and so that's what he's talking about. So we want to look at the context of truth in the form of dictionaries, or what, what we see truth defined today. And so I used um, three dictionaries we're going to cross-compare. I've got a few words just to kind of show how truth is changing for whatever reason. Uh, well, it is. there is a reason. We'll get to that. Um, I've got my American Heritage, my physical copy, right here, right? This is one dictionary. I have a copy, a digital copy of what's called the Concise Oxford Dictionary. So this one's digital, can be changed, updated whenever they want because it's digital. And the third one is the free dictionary.com. And so we're going to go through a few words here. Um, that's really the point of the PowerPoint is to go through words. Our first word is truth. 
And I'm going to start with the American heritage. It says conformity to fact or actuality. Okay. Oxford, uh, OX, is the quality or state of being truth, of opposite to false, true in reality or fact. Okay. That's a good one. Um, and then dictionary.com, dt.com there is the true or actual state of a matter, conformity with fact or reality. So in two of these dictionaries, they brought up this word reality, right? So, all right, on me being a dutiful student, I want to dig deeper. Let's see what reality is. So reality, again, cross-checking the dictionaries, um, is this, American is the state or quality of being real or true. So something that is real in front of you. Um, the Oxford, the state of things as they actually exist, things as they actually are. And then dictionary.com is the thing as, is, as it is experienced and seen. So to me, when I read the dictionary.com example, it's almost like they're trying to struggle with reality right? They're, tr they're, they're looking for an experience. How is this experienced in your life? And that is reality. And then if it's reality, then it's truth, right? They're struggling with that. And that's problematic, especially for us as believers. When we rely on experience to define truth, um, each person gets to define their own truth, their own reality. And we see this in today's society and how that's eroding a lot of things. Um, one example of this is seen in a very, or two words that society today <clears throat> has a very hard time defining for whatever reason. Sorry. <clears throat> um, and that is these two words here, woman and female. Yes, I'm, I'm going there because. You know, we have this documentary that's been recently published. What is a woman? Well, I mean, you look at a dictionary, but don't look at the free one and we'll see why. So we're going to cross check against our dictionaries here to see how this word is changing, how reality and truth is changing throughout the generations or throughout the, the, the years, I should say. So we'll start with woman. American heritage, an adult female human being, very specific. Oxford, an adult human female, same thing, just flip the words, right? And dictionary.com, an adult female person. Okay, I can live with person. It's like a human. Um, female, both, all three of them say this word female. So you got to know what a female is to know what a woman is, right? Um, American heritage of pertaining to or designating the sex that produces ovia or bears young. Okay, so you have to be able to bear young. I can't be a woman because I can't bear young. All right? Easy. Oxford of denoting the sex that can bear offspring or produce eggs. Same thing, right? Now, mind you, these two dictionaries are separated by about a span of 20 years in their publication dates, right? The American heritage was 1985. Oxford was 2004 when it was published. I don't remember the last time I received an update on it. Dictionary.com is updated daily. So this one is really interesting. Um, relating to or being a woman or girl. Kind of like a circle there in their definition. Uh, uh, an adult, a woman is an adult female hurt person. A female is someone who relates to being a woman. Kind of going around in a circle. It's not very defined. It is boiled down to experience, right? There are no longer any absolutes in reality, according to our online free dictionary. And then this is what John is warning against when he says that you have to have the truth in your lives. He's warning against this view of relativism. So we need to define that. What is relativism? And it's this view that everything becomes situational. Right and wrong depends on the person, place, or situation, the time, the day, the age, it can change, you know, for anyone. This means that words can even change at the whim of a person. This is a life without absolutes, a life of that leads to a do whatever feels good mentality. What feels good for me in this moment, that's what I'm going to do because that's what's true to me. 
Um, it reminded me of a modern English idiom that was popularized by the TV show Mythbusters. I don't know if anyone's watched that show, but the, the, the one of the hosts really popularized, popularized this idiom. That is, I reject your reality and substitute my own. That is um, what we are dealing with in today's culture. And so there's a number of philosophers and teachers that have tried to popularize and really get relativism in the works. I pulled up a couple of my college books on logic and reasoning because I had to take a logic class. And it led, led me to um, this one philosopher, Frederick Nietzsche. He's an atheist philosopher, and he put it this way. You have your way, I have my way. As for the right way, the correct way, the only way, it does not exist. Right? There is no correct way. There is no right way because truth is defined by a group or individual. There is no absolute. And um, uh, on another topic that I was studying, um, I came across this uh, uh, famous occultist, if you know the occult, you should know his name, um, Aleister Crowley. Sorry, I couldn't find a better picture of him because that one's kind of creepy. Um, but Aleister Crowley, he started things like the religion of Thelma, the magical order, and several of his books have been used to build the Church of Satan. He is like one of the ground runners of it. And the premise or the basis of the Church of Satan is this statement from Aleister Crowley. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. There is no law beyond do what thou wilt, right? And when he's referring to thou wilt, he's referring to your own true will, right? You do what you want. You do you, I'll do me, and we'll all be happy, right? That kind of mentality. However, these two do not match up to the original relativist, Lucifer. If you've got your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 14. If not, I'm going to put it up because why not? Isaiah 14, we're going to look at verses 13 through 14. The original relativist here, which reads, You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Lucifer lived the do what thou wilt mentality before it was popular, before culture had taken it and run with it. And the result was him being cast out of heaven, right? He was cast down. And unfortunately, Lucifer continues to tempt us with this imitation worldview that he has this skewed worldview however like imitation milk lucifer's imitation world worldview is a gross disgusting byproduct it's nasty it's terrible when you put it in coffee just like his eternal state will be terrible as he is cast in the lake of fire right awful Lucifer takes his relativistic worldview once he's cast out of heaven and begins a full out, full on assault on humanity. And we see this in Genesis, right? Genesis 3 1, he asks the question, did God actually say? Right? He's questioning reality to Eve. Did God actually say this? And when he does this, when he pushes his thoughts and his feelings on humanity, right? Eve questions the reality of God's command. Lucifer gets her to question the truth and to make up her own version of it. And we're not going to debate truth versus relativism today. It's it's very quick debate if you ever want to have it. Um, but that's not the point of today. What the point of today is, is to define what the truth is. Because once you know what the truth is, you can see the lie. You can see through the lie. 